What's up guys, Zane here and welcome to my OS Rune starter guide slash tip video. So if you're a new player, this video is probably going to help you a lot. And if you're a player that has been playing since release, it might still help you. I have a lot of friends that have been playing since release and have asked me some very basic questions that I feel that most new players should know right off the bat. And they just don't know it. So I decided to make this video because I think it's going to help new players and it's going to help players that have been here since release uh, just as well. Also, if you feel that I missed any essential tips, if you're like, whoa, and you totally missed this one tip, then please comment below because other people are probably wondering about you know more tips. And I'm also wondering about tips as well. I learn new things every single day of playing this game. So go ahead, comment below your tips as well. So first tip for you guys would be to turn off public chat in Edgeville. And the reason for that is because you can auto chat. If you type in set up your auto chat, you type in whatever you want, and you're going to auto chat that at like one second uh, per message. And so we're going to turn on public just to show you what kind of cesspool you're going to be living in if you don't turn it off. So right off the bat, you see some random person talking about their YouTube video, which Oh my god, that's just so horrible. Just make your videos and people will come and see them. You don't need to advertise and spam the forums and in Edgeville about your videos. Tons of people selling items, and I understand that, you know, that makes sense, but it's still really annoying to see this. It's just, it's a seizure waiting to happen. So, turn it off. And it's really nice. And then when you're outside of Edgeville, go ahead and turn it on again. And uh, yeah, have fun with that. What I would really like to see, actually, just a quick suggestion. I know this isn't a suggestion video, but make it so we can actually uh, make it so we don't see auto chat. Everything but auto chat. That would be simply amazing. Next up would be the shop. So Sigmund right over here actually sells items. He sells all the items you're pretty much ever going to need. If the item you're looking for isn't in the shop, that either means it's not implemented in the game or you actually need to go find a monster to kill to get that specific item. Such as herbs. Herbs are not in the shop. So when farming is finally implemented, you're going to get herbs either from farming or, like most people do right now, you get them from Slayer. So... You can search up whatever you want. Maybe you want a rune item, you can go there. Maybe you're looking for something specific like a dragon scimitar. There you go. Uh, and that's actually really quite awesome. Now, the sell option. You can actually sell your items and you just put your items in like this and you can see exactly how much they're worth. And obviously this is incredibly inefficient. I highly suggest not selling to Sigmund. Uh, maybe, you know, small little items like this or maybe a chaos rune. Uh, if you have a lot of chaos runes and you don't use them or death runes or, you know, maybe even mind runes, things like that you could sell to Sigmund, I suppose. But even then, you could probably sell them to players for a lot more than Sigmund is doing it. So that's really inefficient. And I highly suggest either just keeping your items in a bank and acting like you're an item. Iron Man or going into this wait no this and uh, trying to sell whatever items you're trying to sell but uh, me personally I'm going to stick to keeping it all in the bank now if you have a tooth half and a loop half let's see if we do we have a loop cool now do we have a tooth I've been doing barrows a lot so I feel like we should yes we do you might get one of these or both of these drops in your time PVMing. Now, if you combine them, you're going to get a crystal key. Now, if you open the closed chest, you're going to get an assured dragon stone every time you open them. Then you might also get some other random items. So I got a couple coins and I also got a spinach roll. Now, what you're looking for, the big drops in here, is the crystal bow and the crystal shield. So if you get one of those, a server message will pop up saying, yo, 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 this boy got a crystal bow slash crystal shield, and you'll know that you got it. Plus, obviously, you'll see it in your inventory. Next up is Mac. He is the skill cape guy, as you can see here. Uh, which, by the way, the most efficient cape would be the ranging cape, as it also acts as an Ava's accumulator. Uh, skill clips are right there, and then if you want to decant your potions, maybe turn all your three-dose potions into four-dose potions, as an example. All you do is do this, and then do that, and it will decant all your potions. And actually, it decanted my prayer potion, so that's pretty cool as well. Next up would be Slayer. Slayer is right over here, actually. It's just in the Edgeville Jail. So if we go over here and we talk to this little lady, you can get your assignment. Now currently, um, I have assigned nothing. So I can actually get an assignment right here and show you how it's done. So personally, I've actually been farming barrows quite a lot. So I'm looking for a barrows assignment 
as well because I'm working on a loot from Barrow's video for OS Rune. So Barrow's brothers are a boss task. So I got King Black Dragon. I do not want that. It's going to ask me, the cool thing about Barrow's uh, or boss task is it's going to ask you how many you want to actually slay. So we're going to put three. It doesn't really matter because we're going to be um, skipping this task. And I do know that someone's spamming me here. Um, might ignore them. Who knows? Obviously, if I don't answer, don't keep on PMing me. I'm probably making a video or going to the bathroom. And this guy's probably going to be like, oh my god, Ain is so horrible. He never, you know, listens to people that PM him. You know, something like that. But let's see if we can get a Barrow's task. There we go. We got Barrow's brothers. And we'll put that we want to slay 35. Now, if we look into our Slayer info, you can see that we have 35 assigned Barrows Brothers and we have 35 remaining. It's also going to show us our Slayer points and the amount of tasks we've completed. Not only that, but it's going to tell you how to get to whatever task you're heading to. For this one, we're going to be doing the Barrows minigame, which you can access with the activity portal, which I'll show you right now. So Slayer is actually really awesome because you do get this quick link, which also little mini tip. You can change your appearance by clicking here, and I highly suggest setting a pin. If you don't set a pin, then you're honestly an idiot, because if you get hacked, you're not going to get refunded at all. So here's the activity portal, and this is how you go to Barrows. And we'll check that out in a second. But first, I want to show you guys Horvik. A lot of people have been asking me, hmm, how do I repair my gear? How do I repair my Barrows? Because if you don't know, the mystery box uh, has a really high chance of giving you broken Barrows gear. I don't know why, that's just how it works. Now, you can actually fix all your Barrow's gear by going to Horvik. It costs around 250k a pop. Next up would be earned coins for skilling. So the cool, really innovative, awesome thing about this server is everything makes money. Be it skilling, PVMing, you know, PKing obviously, if you're skilled enough, merchanting, whatever it is, it makes you money. And skilling is really no different. And that's something that a lot of servers don't do correctly. So let's click on earn coins and learn more. So earnings from skilling. Executing successful skilling actions will earn you coins. The amount of coins earned is equal to the skill level request times 20. For example, chopping a magic lock will earn you one or 1500 coins, which is 75 times 20. 75 being the level which is required to cut a magic log and 20 being the base. Uh, number that it's multiplied by so this is really cool because it can make you a lot of money and it makes slayer incredibly efficient when doing slayer you're going to be making earned coins while you're doing it because slayer is a non-combat skill it does not raise your combat level which is really awesome in my opinion so for instance that barrows brother task i'm actually getting 50,000 gp every single time I kill the Barrow's brother. One Barrow's brother equals 50,000 GP. So it's a really fantastic and efficient way to make a lot of money. Next up would be the XP counter. I get a lot of questions about this. What's that little yellow bar uh, below your XP counter? This is actually a goal. I currently have a goal set for 70 mining. Now I haven't actually worked on mining in a while and I should change that goal. However, let's talk about our uh, XP counter. So if you click setup, you're going to be able to open up this UI and it's going to allow you to set up all the goals you want, allow you to change the color, the progress bar, um, you know, whatever you want, the smallest to the medium to the largest, which changes the number size, the speed, the duration, all this kind of good stuff. So it's definitely really cool. It's a great quality of life implementation that's on this server and I really like it. Next up is the activity portal. Lots of people have been asking me, how do you get a fighter torso? How do you get a dragon defender? It's actually incredibly simple and I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Now, getting a fighter torso and a dragon defender combined is going to take you around 30 to 40 minutes regardless of your gear. I do, however, suggest having 43 pair because it's going to make it incredibly easy to block the attacks from the rune creatures. Now, right here, nobody's actually doing it at the Warrior's Guild, but I'm going to give you the basic premise of what you need to do. Actually, I'll show it to you right in the video because I know some people might mess up if they don't see me actually do it. So what you need to do is bring a full set of rune armor. So we're just going to stretch in our bank rune. You're going to need the plate body, the legs, and the helm. And then you're going to run back over here and you're going to use any piece on the magical animator. Next up, you're going to pray magic or uh, pray melee 
because they're level 138. They're actually really easy to kill. And what they're going to do is they're going to drop the full rune armor that you put into the magical animator as well as 40 warrior tokens each. And it's going to take you a little bit of time to get the amount of tokens necessary for a dragon defender and a fighter torso. However, it will probably only take you around 30 to 40 minutes in total to get the fighter torso, get enough tokens to actually go in and get your dragon defender, and actually get the dragon defender drops. So, under an hour, you should have both of these items, and they're really, really good because they give fantastic stats indeed. Really fantastic for Slayer, uh, really fantastic just for PVMing overall, since the Fighter Torso is just a uh, slightly weaker Bandos chestplate. So, uh, once you have your tokens, which we didn't actually pick up, so you get the 40 tokens, and, well, we're not actually going to do it all right here, but... The Fighter Torso costs 1,500 Warrior Guild Tokens. So after a while, you get 1,500 Warrior Guild Tokens, and you'll be able to get that Fighter Torso. That should take you around 30 minutes. Now, after you get your Fighter Torso, obviously equipped it because it do equip it because it does give you that Strength Bonus, and then get around 100 to 200 more. So uh, gather Warrior Guild Tokens and use them to access the Cyclops Room found above and beneath us. Uh, the Cyclops above drop Bronze to Rune, and then the ones below drop Bronze to Dragon. Cool thing about this server is you don't have to go through and get a Bronze one, the Black one, the Mithril one, the Adamant one, etc., etc. It's actually based off your level. So if you have level 60 defense and higher, you're going to be assured a drop of a Dragon Defender. So don't go upstairs because you're not going to get a Dragon Defender from that. Actually go downstairs. And if you go downstairs, you're pretty much going to be assured a Dragon Defender. I personally got 100 tokens and I went here and I lasted, I don't know, I think I lasted, well, the whole 100 tokens, uh, I think lasted a couple minutes and I got three Dragon Defenders. So get 100 to 200 and you'll definitely get a Dragon Defender. Be forewarned though, you need to have at least 100 tokens to enter. And last but not least for my tip videos is check out the forums, guys. And this isn't really like, like I'm not saying like, oh, join the community, become one with the community, namaste. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying go on the forums and check out the update development threads because Extia, aka Jordan, the developer of the server, actually brings out about daily updates and you don't want to miss out one of those updates you don't want to just get some hearsay from another player talking about the updates actually go and read them yourselves and figure out exactly what changes because that can really help you make money that can really help you get a jump on uh, whatever new thing that's going to be implemented into the game such as today or maybe yesterday uh, depending on the time zones and when this video was uploaded, blood money was implemented. So whenever you actually kill a PVMing boss or a PVMing monster, any NPC in the wilderness, you get blood money, which is a fantastic way to make a lot of GP at the moment. So check out the update threads. That's a big, that's probably the biggest tip I'm going to give in this video because that can really allow you to figure out what's going on. You know, uh, when farming comes out, that's going to be a great way to make money. When a lot of these skills come out, it's going to be a fantastic way to make money. And if you're there, right, when it gets updated, or even the next morning, you know, uh, if he does it at night and you wake up in the morning and you see the update, you're going to be a step above around 50% of those players that don't actually check the forums. So that's it for the tip video for OS Rune. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit that like button. If you're new around here, you can subscribe. I do uh, weekly RSPS content. And now we're going to be talking about my live streaming schedule. So it's not just live streaming. We're actually going to be talking about the overarching subject of live streaming and what that entails. So lots of people PM me saying, are you live streaming? When are you live streaming? How do you live stream, etc., etc.? I live stream via YouTube. I do not use Twitch because they do not allow RSPS content. And I do not use Hitbox because I personally just dislike the platform. I use YouTube because it's really easy to use and a lot of people find it pretty easy to use as well. All you need to do is subscribe to my channel and you'll know exactly when I'm live. And no, you don't actually have to subscribe either. You can come onto my channel and check out whenever I'm live. However, if you do subscribe to the channel, it's going to tell you when I'm actually live in your subscription box. So if you're thinking about ever PMing me, are you live? When are you going to live? Or anything like that, just check my channel. If I'm live, I'll actually be live. 
Now, of course, you can actually ask me like, yo, man, are you live streaming today? And I'll give you an idea. I might say don't know about 90% of the time. I'll say don't know because I really don't. I don't have a schedule. I live stream when I'm in a good mood, when I'm pumped to play, when I'm ready to play, when I have some, you know, MF Doom in the background and I'm just really excited to play the game. That's when I live stream. And my personality and my mood can change at a flick of the wrist, you know? Uh, so I might be happy one minute and then sad the next. Well, not so much. That sounds pretty depressing. I might be hyped to play the game and then be like, hmm, I feel like playing Fallout 4 right now instead. So I never really assure that I'm actually live streaming. But yeah, I live stream on YouTube. If you subscribe, you'll see it in your subscription box. Or you can just refresh my uh, channel every once in a while. And um, yeah. That's about it, guys. Please comment below any tips that I might have missed in this video. Please comment below what type of videos you want to see. I'll be doing a Loot from Barrows video very, very soon. Uh, and I, I'm also thinking about doing a lot of 99 skill guides as well. Because I want to do things that are a little bit different. And uh, I have a lot of ideas. I've been talking to a lot of people that are giving me these innovative ideas. So thank you. You guys know who you are. And uh, I don't want it to be like the all these other people where they're just doing these really lackluster uh, progress videos a lot of these people they're doing these progress videos where they don't even progress where they get like little to no xp they get nothing done and so uh, i want to be a little bit different regardless of if i get something done or not i want to bring out content that you guys actually want to see and is actually going to help you out so hope you guys enjoyed peace Already woke, spit a joke, barely spoke, rarely smoke, stared at folks when properly provoked, mirror broke. Hair share a strawberry morning, corn and more important spawning, torn in, poor men's.